Located on the Hook Peninsula near Wexford Island, Loftus Hall not only has an eerie look, it is probably Ireland's most haunted house. The current mansion dates back to only the 1870s, but its predecessor was constructed in 1170, while some locals say that the place marks an original sacred site for Ireland's early Celtic inhabitants. Its dark history has produced reports of a troubled spirit haunting its rooms, a disturbing legendary visitor from hell, and the chilling image of a viral ghost photo snapped in 2014. In 1170, Houseland Castle was erected as a stronghold from which various knights extended Norman rule over Ireland. A new castle was rebuilt from its ruins nearly 200 years later. In the 1600s, the hall, as it became known, was defended twice against English troops during the Irish Confederate Wars, but finally appropriated by Cromwell around 1650. In 1666, the Loftus family of English planters took over the hall, which they extensively renovated. As the Loftus name rose high in the peerage, their descendants again rebuilt the hall in the hope that Queen Victoria could be enticed to visit them on their remote windswept peninsula. For that reason, the new Loftus Hall became a mansion fit for royalty with its grand hand-carved Italian staircase and ornate mosaic tiled floor. Despite all this luxury, Queen Victoria never visited the hall, but it instead attracted a more infamous and even sinister guest, the devil himself. History tells us that in the middle of the 18th century, Charles Tottenham married Anne Loftus, becoming Lord of the Manor. Of their six children, a daughter also called Anne became central to the strange ghost story attaching to Loftus Hall. After her mother passed away, Charles had remarried to his cousin Jane Cliff. The two were residing with Anne and the rest of the family in Loftus Hall when, one night, a fierce storm struck the peninsula. Emerging from this dark and stormy weather came a young stranger requesting shelter at Loftus Hall. This was not an uncommon occurrence in an era when terrible storms often left ships wrecked upon the shore. Anne and the young man quickly fell for each other. Their growing affection and the wild conditions outside saw the stranger staying at Loftus Hall over several weeks. One night, while a group at the hall were playing cards, Anne bent down under the table to retrieve a card she had dropped. The other players were startled when she jumped up with a cry, exclaiming that her chosen one had a cloven hoof. Thus revealed, the stranger admitted that he was, in fact, the devil. Reportedly, he transformed into a ball of fire and burst out through the roof. Popular legend then tells us that the gap torn by the devil's exit of Loftus Hall could never be fully repaired and, according to some, you can still see the patch where the roof is different to this very day. Seemingly, Anne never recovered from the traumatic incident. Her family confined her within the tapestry room, which had been her favourite room in the manor until her passing in 1775. After Anne passed away, her spirit was reported as having returned to the halls of the house and particularly the room where she was confined. However, she is not alone. The devil also made a repeat appearance. In fact, several of them. The legend records that the sinister being returned to the place where he was unmasked to plague the household with poltergeist activity while continuously tormenting poor Anne. Although Protestant, the family at Loftus Hall brought in several clergymen, including a Catholic priest, to try to cleanse the house of the devil's haunting. The priest, Father Thomas Broaders, was said to have been the most successful and his now lost gravestone inscribed with the achievement. It had read, Here lies the body of Thomas Broaders, who did good and prayed for all, and who banished the devil from Loftus Hall. The fact that Loftus Hall seems to have remained a haunted site to this day, however, suggests that even Father Broaders wasn't able to completely eliminate the dark forces from the ancient estate. According to historical accounts, Anne never spoke another word after her glimpse of the devil's cloven hoof. She is recorded as having spent her days gazing out of the window across the sea, 
When she passed, it is said that her body could not be straightened out and had to be buried curled around with her knees drawn up under her chin. Since then, Anne's apparition reportedly haunts the property. It is her spirit standing beside what seems to be the ghostly form of an older woman that some believe was captured in a tourist photograph that went viral in 2014. This image secured Loftus Hall's reputation as the most haunted house in all of Ireland. What actually happened to Anne still remains a mystery. Those skeptical that the devil paid her a courting call believe that there are several other possible explanations for her confinement and demise. Some just as strange and likely to produce a haunting presence as any diabolical visitation. There are some who believe that the story of the devil was fabricated by the Loftus family to discourage beggars and other strangers from paying visits to the hall. The now aristocrats were, after all, trying to attract the interest of the Queen. On the other hand, associating their home with the Prince of Darkness would not appear the best strategy for prompting a royal visit. Another theory is that the stranger and his infatuation with Anne, which she reciprocated, were real, but he was of inferior birth. Perhaps when he asked Anne's father for her hand in marriage, he was rebuffed, leaving Anne heartbroken. And then there may have been a much darker reason for Anne's confinement. Loftus Hall was restored in 1870, and during that renovation, it was reported by some that the skeletal remains of a tiny infant were discovered in the walls of what had once been the tapestry room where Anne had been virtually imprisoned. Could Anne have become pregnant with the stranger's child? It's possible that her father, in desperation to protect the family name, kept the pregnancy a secret, even from the local doctor. This could have resulted in Anne dying from complications during childbirth, after which he walled up her baby to conceal the truth. Anne's grave is located near the hall in a cemetery in Wexford, but strangely, unlike the surrounding graves, hers is cemented over. It's as if whoever buried her wanted to ensure that she could never be disinterred, that she would stay buried. If the stories of her hauntings are to be believed, this obviously didn't work. While the reputed devil's visits to the hall may have stopped with Anne's demise or with Father Broder's exorcism, the house has retained its haunted notoriety across the decades. It has become the subject of documentaries and failed feature film projects and was the filming location for the 2017 ghost horror movie The Lodges. Loftus Hall also appeared in episodes of the paranormal investigation series Irish Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. The show went to air after the eerie ghost photo went viral in 2014. The photo, snapped by Englishman Thomas Beavis, shows what appear to be two spectres observing a tour group through one of the many windows of Loftus Hall. Beavis told the New Ross Standard that his group were all feeling somewhat edgy on the tour, but when he showed the photo to his friends, they became totally unnerved. He speculated that the young woman could be the spirit of Anne Tottenham, still roaming around Loftus Hall, but otherwise couldn't explain it. The Loftus family eventually went bankrupt and finally died out, leaving no familial heir. Loftus Hall was later turned into a convent, but it was said that people were too afraid to attend Mass in the building's chapel due to the stories of an infernal presence in the building. In the 1980s, it was converted into the Loftus Hall Hotel by Michael Devereux, who later passed in the house. His wife, who was left to run the hotel on her own, is said to have one day simply disappeared without any explanation. The fabulous mansion stood empty for many years, attracting rumours of satanic rituals being held within its abandoned halls. In 2011, it gained new owners and opened to the public with guided tours giving information about the house's history and hauntings. <laughs>